Bahrain is an island approximately 300 square miles in size and situated in the Arabian Gulf. We are linked to Saudi Arabia by a 16-mile bridge. It is believed that Jews have lived in what became the modern kingdom of Bahrain since the times of the Talmud, and research shows that Jews lived in Hajar, the capital of Bahrain, in 630 CE. Jews started coming to Bahrain in the early 1880s. My family arrived in the 19th century from Iraq. They were on their way to India, looking for better economic prospects. The boat stopped in Bahrain, they liked what they saw, and they stayed there. The Bahrain Jewish community was prosperous, and Al Mutanabi Road, where all the businesses were closed on Saturdays, was known as Souq al Yehud, or the Jewish market. They lived peacefully with their neighbors and were involved in all aspects of Bahraini life. Today's Bahraini Jewish community is tiny. It comprises 34 people, not families, but individuals. I am related to all of them, either from my mother's side or my father's side. <laughs> we were not always such a small community. In the 1940s, we numbered around 1,500. Following the declaration of the State of Israel in 1948, writers tore through the Jewish quarter in Manama, looting houses, destroying property, and ransacking the synagogue, and left the community shocked. The perpetrators of these attacks were not local. The Bahrainis had given shelter and protection to their Jewish neighbors. Many families left off their own choice for better prospects. And unlike most Arab countries, they were allowed to live with their property. An estimated 500 Jews remained in Bahrain until riots broke out after the Six-Day War in 1967. Today, you can find Jews, in all part, uh, Jews with Bahraini roots in all parts of the world, in the USA, Canada, UK, Israel, to name a few countries. My family were established both economically and socially, and they could not envisage a life outside of Bahrain, so they decided to stay. Growing up in Bahrain, everyone knew we were Jewish. I went to a Catholic school and was taught by nuns. My friends were of different religions and backgrounds, and we grew up respecting each other's differences. I never felt the need to hide my religion. We celebrated together our major festivals like Ramadan, Hanukkah, Diwali, and Christmas. Especially during Ramadan and Iftar, we, our neighbors and friends, would send dishes of food to each other. Although we have a synagogue, it has not been used since the 50s. As you can imagine, it is very hard to have a minion, but high holidays and major festivals are always celebrated in our homes. We have celebrated Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Pesach and Hanukkah with Jews serving at the naval base. We continue our traditions, and at home we continue to speak the Arabic that our ancestors spoke. For high school, I was sent to Carmel College, an Orthodox Jewish boarding school in England. My father was a prominent businessman. When he died in 1993 in a car accident in Saudi Arabia, people from all walks of life, including the Emir, the present king's father, and the prime minister, came to pay condolences at the Shiva. In 1934, my paternal grandfather was elected to serve on the Manama Municipal Council, which at that time was the highest elected body. His participation and, uh, in, in Bahraini politics and civil society established a precedent. I am proud to follow in my grandfather's footsteps almost 70 years later. In 2006... In 2006, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa appointed me to serve in Bahrain's Upper House of Parliament, the Shura Council. On April 24, 2008, at 3.17 p.m., I received a call from Bahrain's Foreign Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, who informed me that His Majesty, the King, was nominating me to serve as Bahrain's ambassador to the United States. I arrived in this... I arrived in D.C. in July of 2008 and was also the non-resident ambassador to Argentina, Brazil, Canada, and Mexico. <laughs> After five and a half years of having had the honor of serving my country, I returned, leaving behind many great memories and friends, some of who are in the audience today. During my time as ambassador, I was involved in interreligious dialogues and hosted many events bringing people together from different religious, religions and ethnicities. A lot of people were amazed to find that the ambassador representing Bahrain was a woman. 
I could not fathom how I could be Arab and Jewish at the same time. For me, as well as for most Bahrainis, it doesn't seem out of the ordinary. Our gender, nor the religion we practice, has ever restricted the opportunity of any Bahraini to succeed. Over the years, we have had the annual visit of AJC delegations coming out to Bahrain. Every year, I have had the pleasure of hosting them at my house for a dinner, where they meet my family and friends. On a few visits, we even lit the Hanukkah candles together, and I can attest that it has been a truly unique experience. Since I have been back in Bahrain, I have taken an active role in taking visitors to see the synagogue and talking to them about our coexistence. I look forward to one day welcoming you all to Bahrain so you can enjoy the hospitality, tranquility, and experience the coexistence of our island. Thank you, AJC, for having me over. Thank you.